house. It will happen 20 minutes uh, press conference, and we like the press to uh, ask questions that uh, the admiral will answer. And of course, I will ask you to uh, ask questions that they uh, do not involve with his active service. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, uh, good evening, everybody. Calipera. It's great to be here and to have a chance to uh, celebrate our collective heritage. I'll have more to say about that later in a, a little a talk as we uh, go downstairs for dinner. But I do want to say uh, thank you so much for welcoming me and my wife, Laura, and our daughter, Christina, my colleagues. Uh, I am also uh, proud to be here as uh, this Allied Commander of NATO. And I do want to say thank you to, uh, to Greece for the hard work in the NATO Alliance and to all in the Greek American community here for the wonderful support from the United States of America. Thank you very much. Today, I think the, uh, the legacy of uh, HIOS and the Society of the Federation is one of service and of integration and of absolute dedication to the ideals that have made the United States and Greece such iconic nations in the world. Well, you know, from a personal uh, point of view, you know, when I started reading, um, seeing your name in the paper when you took over NATO, it's a couple of years ago. Uh, almost four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it really uh, felt pride. Not, obviously, I, I, the, the name is Greek, right? And, uh, and, and uh, by you coming here, it's a tremendous honor for all of us. Oh. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of love for you here. And, uh, and thank you. I, I feel that yeah. very strongly yeah. Uh, yeah. every day. And uh, yes, the name is of uh, Greek origin. My uh, Greek grandparents uh, actually came from uh, what is today uh, Turkey. They came in the 1920s here uh, through Athens and then to the United States through Ellis Island. And uh, they have uh, came and opened a restaurant. Uh, yeah, 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 as I know many... Uh, it's rare. Are, uh, yeah. <laughs> Almost unheard of. And uh, my grandfather, Demetrius, of course, I'm named after my grandfather, Demetrius. For many years, he ran uh, the downtown diner in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Wow. Okay, and, so you're uh, close. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, my father then, uh, George, uh, joined the uh, U.S. Marine Corps and served in uh, World War II and in Korea and in Vietnam and from my... Uh, my grandfather, Demetrius, I learned uh, the values of hard work, and from my father, George, uh, I learned patriotism and service to my country. And so uh, through them, my uh, Greek heritage uh, has brought me to this place today. Now, just you know, before, um, my thoughts are to take back the troops, you know, by you being honored here, in my heart, we're also honoring the men and women in the armed for forces. Well, thank you very much, and, and any award that I'm ever uh, lucky enough to receive in my life, I, I receive very humbly on behalf of the men and women of the uh, armed forces of the United States, where I serve. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Are you related to the Mr. Please? <laughs> <laughs> you know, all uh, Greek, all Greek admirals many, are related. Many years ago, I, I read the, the article that you lecture about the Battle of Salamine. I did. And you have no idea how uh, I feel so uh, uh, proud and from the heritage that this battle for 400, 475 BC, I believe was, it was the, the war against Western civilization and the Eastern civilization. And that battle, I think, it gave us what we have today. So that's why we all so much to ancient Greece. And unfortunately, the same thing is going, is going on recently with all these illegals. They go through 
Greece, and then from there they go to the Euro. So it hasn't changed from the ancient world to today. It hasn't changed a lot. Well, uh, whenever I talk about Themistocles, I, I like to tell the story of the speech he made uh, before the Battle of Salamis. And it's a very famous, very short uh, way in which he inspired the free men of Greece because they were outnumbered uh, 10 to 1 in the battle they would fight the next day in the Bay uh, of Salamis, outnumbered 10 to 1 by the Persians. But the Persian rowers and most of the Persian warriors were slaves, whereas all of the Greeks on the triremes were all free men. Defending the freedom. Correct. And the night before the battle, Themistocles gathered his forces and he said to them, tomorrow you must row for your parents. Tomorrow you must row for your city. And tomorrow you must row for freedom. And that's what the great triremes of Athens went and defended freedom in the Bay of Salamis. I have uh, If I could ask you, what are the challenges of the modern Navy? When uh, Governor Romney was speaking the other day at the debate, he was talking about the fact that the Navy is not as big as it used to be in the old days. It's being reduced. Is it being reduced just because it's more efficient or because the ships are a little bit more capable than they were in the old days? How does the reduction affect the capabilities of the Navy? Well, the, the challenges that our Navy and our ships face in many ways are similar to the challenges that were faced by the Athenian Navy. Uh, ships have the inherent ability to maneuver on the sea and can be many different places, so they need speed, they need flexibility, they need determined crews, they need modern armaments, they need logistics and supply. They need the ability to impact events ashore with our long-range Tomahawk missiles. They need the ability to defend against ballistic missiles. So we have our Aegis air defense system, named after Aegis for the word for shield from Greek. And all of those characteristics together, those advanced technologies, allow us to operate a very capable fleet. Today, the largest seagoing fleet in the world the most warships, the most technologically advanced, and really the most capable. Most of us who came from uh, Greece or some from Cyprus and having and raised children here uh, and try to give them and promote to them our her heritage, we would like to hear something uh, from a person who could be a role model for, for them. And we are happy that the Heans bring us all the time some exceptional role models. What, what are you telling them about uh, our heritage, how it helped you move up? And uh, after answering to that, I would like also to ask you uh, how the present situation of Greece uh, makes you feel and sometimes maybe affect you because at least for some of us who work, let's say I work at the United Nations, often I hear comments that I don't like about Greece. Well, the way I would answer the question is to put the, the heritage of Greece into perspective over the long, long throw of history. And I think we, we talked a moment or two ago about what Greece has given to the world. I think it, it begins with a democracy begins with the ideals upon which the Enlightenment in Europe were founded. It is a direct line from the creation of democracy in ancient Greece to freedom of the press, which we celebrate today with, with all of you members of the press, freedom of speech, freedom to worship as we wish, freedom to educate our children the way we want to. I think all of those values came out of ancient Greece, came through the Renaissance, into the Enlightenment in Europe, and were passed here to the United States. So first and foremost, I think Greece and Greeks all around the world, and there are Greek Americans, Greek Australians, Greek Belgians, where NATO is today, in 
Belgium, everywhere you go, you find people of Greek descent, Hellenic descent. And I think that those ideals flow through all of the men and women. And I think we can all take pride in that. Um, I think that is the way we should keep events of today in perspective. Uh, there are many, many centuries uh, in the history of civilization, but Greece stands as a very proud part at the beginning and on through into today. How about yes. today? <coughs> and today. Yes. Admiral Sabridis, could you comment on uh, your numerous position as an American commander in Europe? I can. I actually have two jobs. I'm the commander of NATO forces, the Supreme Allied Commander for NATO. I'm also the commander of U.S. European Command, which means I'm in charge of military-to-military -military relationships between the United States and the 51 countries of Europe. So I spent a great deal of time trying to strengthen those military-to-military -military relationships and ensure that our allies continue to stand with us in military operations around the world. Can we, can we sort of like digress a little bit? The Admiral's going to be here for only a couple of hours. I'd love to get to know a little bit more about the Admiral, not the military officer, but the Admiral of the, the, the American of Hellenic descent. Where's Captain Scarvelius? Did I say that right, Captain? Yes, American of Hellenic descent. Uh, exactly. Thank you. Uh, and I have a question as a segue into it. Um, if looking back at your career, uh, Admiral, what would you say was the proudest moment? Well, I knew it, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> Aside from the fact that your lovely wife, of course, Christina, yeah. that doesn't count. Besides that. Uh, I think any, any career, I think we all have careers. Um, any career has moments of great joy and moments of great challenge. Um, and I will tell you that, uh, for me, the, the moment that I felt most fulfilled in my professional life was when I took command of my first ship. And for the first time, was the captain of a destroyer and was able to get the ship underway that very day and take it out to sea. It was a, a beautiful Arleigh Burke destroyer called the Barry. We were in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, and we got the ship underway and immediately went out on operations in the uh, humanitarian crisis of Haiti uh, in 1993. So I would say that was uh, a moment of real joy in my professional life. In my personal life, my best moment was marrying my wife, Laura, and the birth of my daughter, Christina, and our other daughter, Julia. And again, I think we're all lucky to be uh, involved with our, our families as well. So uh, there are always wonderful professional and personal moments. I put uh, those two together and uh, give you one of each. I have one more question. Sure. I got you. <laughs> okay. How would you define a, a true leader? Um, I think a leader is a servant. I think that the true leader is one who every day and every minute thinks about the men and women uh, who are part of his or her command and seeks to advance them and to improve them and to inspire them and to serve them. And by doing that, I believe that success will follow your flag, as we say in in other words, all that you accomplish in life, you accomplish by enabling others to achieve their goals. So I would say the leader as servant is the heart of my philosophy. Thank you. I'd like to go a step further and ask you, Admiral, as in your tenure as uh, the Supreme Allied Commander, what has been your proudest moment as the commander? Uh, your best accomplishment? Well, feel? I feel very strongly uh, and positively about the outcome of events in Libya. Here we saw a, a brutal dictator, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, who had, uh, who had denied his people freedom for uh, 40 years, and uh, his people rose up against that dictatorship. Uh, the United Nations uh, asked NATO to do three things in Libya, to create a no-fly zone so that Gaddafi could not use his aircraft against the people of Libya to enforce an arms embargo at sea so the regime could not be resupplied and to protect the people of Libya by ensuring that Gaddafi's war machine was unable to kill them. 
Uh, we did that as an alliance. We operated from bases in the Mediterranean. Greece was extremely supportive in this regard. Many of these flights came out of Greek bases in Crete, for example. And the alliance came together and enforced a United Nations Security Council resolution that at the end of the day uh, resulted in liberty, freedom, and democracy in Libya. Now, there are certainly challenges in Libya, and there continue to be such. But I think overall, whenever I see a nation that has afforded the opportunity to achieve democracy, I feel pride that the alliance had a role to play in that under the auspices of the United Nations and the international community. Sure. So 